that working? I think so. Hmm. Uh, looks good. Evening all. If we are working, which it looks like we are, please give us a thumbs up under the video as per usual. Type something in the comments or whatever. Uh, just so I know how it's working. Evening, Peter. Let's see, let's just give it a second or two. See if we get some thumbs from somebody. If the sound's coming out and the video's coming out. Hmm. There was a few odd seconds delay. Let's see. Uh, maybe not, maybe nothing's working. That's annoying. Um, hang on a minute, let me just make sure. I've got all the knobs twiddled, things plugged in. Microphone plugged in, yes. Hmm. Ah, there we are, we've got a thumb up, good out. Right, hopefully that means we're working then, marvellous. Um, right, so we have got prices of the stuff. Um, the three machines sold at the weekend. All three went this weekend. Last week was a bit slow, a bit sluggish. Um, and I wondered if that would kind of continue sort of January, February time. Um, as it always used to in the years of proper auctions. This week it's been all right, the stuff sold and sold quite well. So um, there we are, maybe I was panicking too soon or too unnecessarily. So let me just click the right button. Um, so we had, oh dear, Ethan Chris, um, the sort of English version of the Seeger high top. Um, had a bit of the escalator broken, if you remember. Need, need, need a little bit of work. Uh, 236. And the uh, oops, very nice high top. Uh, high top jewel, 860. Um, that one's a bit of an old restoration. Sixpence, so it kind of dulled down a bit again nicely. Really nice one, that one. Um, 860. And then the Pace Comet, that rather spectacular, all chrome uh, Pace uh, 2060, even David. So yeah, and run around a couple of times while people are signing on. Um, so yeah, that was quite pleasing that all three machines that were up this week are sold. Um, this coming week, I think there's three again, isn't there? Let me just have a look at the website while they're running around. <clears throat> um, what have we got ending this week? Tons and tons of spares. And, um, oh no, I don't think there's any machines finished this week, is it? It'll be next week again. Yeah, so this Sunday, it's all spares and coins. So then next Sunday there'll be, um, The uh, oh, hang on a minute, David. I'll have a look in a minute. The um, high top jigsaw and the select color, which I just put up today. The winning plan and a nice um, bandit stand. Evening, David. Uh, the other David, uh, David got so trouble getting onto the wanted page of the site. Hmm, uh, from where? just have a look see if I can see what's going on check the wanted it's working from my end the coin not wanted I've just looked at let's have a look at anything else not much on the other wanted pages at the minute um, spares let's try yeah, the wanted is there on the spares page as well so I'm not sure um, where you having problems from there David work in mind at the moment uh, just at least run um, one more time and I'll go to the website and have a quick click evening Paul um, then I've got some old photographs to show you again some stuff we've been collecting up um, <clears throat> and chat about the um, next planned event in March so if we just pop over to the website a minute let me just see if we can find out what this problem is that David's been having. So in theory, so for example, on the coin up machine page, just click the button at the top from the sales. 
that wanted. If you just click this button here, check the full wanted list. That shows you all the machines we've currently got buyers waiting to buy. Um, from chat, what is the link? From chat. Hmm. Let me post you an example link. So that's the coin not wanted page, for example. I don't know where you mean from chat. I'm, you've lost me slightly, so I'm slightly confused. Um, this is just my sample account I'm looking at on here, so. It should be the same as your account. <clears throat> don't know. Sorry, I don't know. I'm a bit lost. Uh, if you're still having problems, send me a message via the website and I'll try and sort it out from there. I'm not quite sure where you're getting the problem exactly. Uh, evening, Peter. Uh, yeah, so let's just pick, ping these prices around another time because a few people have signed on a bit later. Uh, so these are the three that sold this weekend, and then we'll have a look at some photographs and have a chit chat about the planned event for the 6th of March. Hmm. Oh, and also the selective machine thing, because somebody's already asked me some questions about, so let's have a look at that. Uh, so let's just pop back to the website. Uh, so today I put up the selector colour, uh, a bandit stand and the winning plan which was a literary mechanical machine that didn't go before whenever it was up before christmas was it david's all sorted excellent that's good to hear um now the selector color machine um i haven't done a video of it because as it's not working it's kind of not anything to to video really it's too big to put on me spinny turntable thing so i have took a whole lot of photographs of it and quite a detailed description uh, somebody asked, was it the same one that was appeared on the Penny's Machines site about two or three years ago or something, 2019, I think? Uh, yes, it is. It's exactly the same machine. There is only one as far as we know. Um, <clears> there <throat> was pictures, then all thick with dust in the, back of a, in the back of a truck or a storage container or something. It is the same machine. Um, so there we are. As I say, it's all... Um, quite a detailed description. It's been taken down from eight player sections at some time to four player sections. So four of the eight coin um, acceptor panels, if you like, are missing. There's a closer of uh, somewhere. These little things with the four lights in. Um, but all the actual coin accepting uh, stuff inside that registers the coins is all there and all eight payouts are there. Uh, but again, four of the cups have been blanked off. So if you want to put it back to eight player, you'd need four more of these with the little lights in, and you'd need four payout cups. The payout cups around are still on the door. They took the actual cup off and put a bit of hardboard under it or something. Um, so you'll see on the, on the main photograph here, if I just Lure it up a bit, probably. The central uh, door there's got the payout cup in it. The ones to either side, uh, it's been blanked off. It's got the surround, but the actual cup is missing. So all the electronic governments is all in the top. What is missing is the actual main control panel. So it will just go down on a bunch of wires to a big plug, multi-pin plug, and that should plug into the control panel, which is not there, sadly. Um, so I figured out it must be something like a Jameson, I put a link here to like a, to a Jameson top 10 type thing where you're betting on multi um, selections. You can bet on one or all of them, the lights flash and it stops and it pays out, I'm sure you know the type of thing. Uh, I picked that particular one because we've got a couple of 
uh, pictures of the insides there. Uh, since then, somebody sent me a link. Uh, George, was it, I think, some, if you're on tonight, whoever it was. Anyway, thank you very much. I've had a lot of emails back and forth today, so I'm getting slightly confused as to who set one. Anyway, whoever sent, thank you very much. So I've now got the full patent um, of the machine. I'll quickly put a picture up here. Um, and it shows what the mech like, but we've got, I've got the full page, I think it's something like 21 pages long, I'll upload it onto the site in due course. Um, and it gives wiring diagrams and everything, so if anybody's really, really, really brave, they could probably figure it out from the wiring diagrams. Um, <clears throat> and the patent drawings. The actual machine itself is remarkably similar. Um, you know, it almost looks like they built it first and then do the patent drawings afterwards because it's as far as I can see it's basically exactly the same. The only noticeable difference really is the top, the actual very top of the machine. The patent drawing is eight sides. Um, and on the actual machine itself you'll see they sort of added an extra, so you've got the main eight sided top then they added the extra four sided bit on the top with the um, little payout cards on. So there we are, interesting thing. It's one of those things that's either a, a, just a big lump of fiberglass nonsense or an interesting rare machine, depending on how you look at it. So, whatever. So that's that one. Um, right, pictures. We were looking for this week, uh, we were after um, streets and Whitaker's stuff. So thanks for those who sent bits in. We haven't had an awful lot in, but we've had some, some stuff in. So let's have a look at these. Well, this is not Crompton's one somebody sent in, Crompton's Cave of Horrors. Um, I think I got not a very big, not a very good picture, so that's a bit better picture of that one. Uh, Penny Bowl. Um, I can't remember who sent which picture now, because I don't... Because I've sort of re them all in one folder to show them on here, so... Sorry if I can't remember who sent what. Um... This, I would like a better picture of this if anyone's got one. Streets Potluck. And I think it says a penny payout on every slot. It's a really, really small image and uh, in very, very poor quality. I don't even know where it come from. So I can't see a lot, but if anybody knows what, I think it was Spotluck actually. Very faint S. Streets spot luck. Maybe it says on every spot then. A penny payout on every spot. Not sure. So if anybody knows anything about that, remembers what it was, got a better picture or illustration or anything, um, please send it on over. Let me stick the email on here for those of you who don't know. Um, email any images, etc. to... Um, so let's do the news ones. What we usually do, isn't it? News at Elephant House Auctions dot com. News. I actually want to spell it right at Elephant House Auctions dot com. That's it. If you've got anything to send over to us, stick it on that email address. Um, what else have we got? If you know anything about any of these machines, comment below. A streets wheel them in. Uh, sort of the, the later version, that one. Uh, Peter says, I think it's spot luck, some kind of dice machine, yeah. yeah it looks interesting, no idea how it worked, obviously a multiplayer type thing again. But, um, hmm, interesting. So, spot luck. Uh, you have to wheel them in. Um, next one, uh, then we're on to some Whittakers. I didn't have, didn't have much luck with street stuff, but we've got quite a few Whittakers. So, this one, I think this is the earliest version of the roulette, sort of the original roulette, and a massive cabinet before, before they made it into the hexagonal um, cabinet that we known since, which are done in umpteen different versions. So this was eight player. Um, 
um, like a huge double sided, almost like a big pusher cabinet with a roulette wheel in the middle. So I think the actual action, the play action was the same as it was, just a completely different cabinet. So that's quite interesting. Um, and then the next one we've got is some kiddie rides. Most of these I've sold over the years, probably. Or bits of them, often just the toys off the top of them or whatever. Um, so clown about, two seater. Um, the Derby race, one of the one of the sort of the newer versions, machine that they brought out in the sixties, I think originally something like that. Uh, so this is the two P Derby, which I'm sure you probably all played at some time. I had one of these on the pier for a while. So that same kind of multi multi bet thing. Uh, Epsom Derby, so I think this is kind of the first version of it. They did several machines, basically the same, but just different themes. Uh, horse races and car races, so there's Epsom Derby there. With a big perspex dome over the top. Uh, Grand Prix, so these, a couple of these I've got around to colouring up. The kind of scale electrics uh, track, chain driven um, thing. That's uh, just the black and white version of the picture. Then oh, another kiddie ride, Indian canoe. That would be a bit un PC these days, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be allowed to make that anymore. Especially wouldn't be allowed to call it Indian canoe, of course. It'd have to be Native American canoe. Don't remember. Haven't had one of those. It's probably quite a rare thing. Probably very rare now. Due to the PC brigade, I suspect. Uh, Kentucky Derby, another version of the horse race. I don't think it came out at the same time. All these, these, those four pictures all on the grass kind of looked like they were probably all taken at the same time. But I don't know why they would make essentially two different two different versions of the same game at the same time. <clears throat> um, unless perhaps the payouts were completely different, maybe one was like an arcade one and one was a for casinos or something, you know, much higher value stakes, don't know. Let's see what you can find out on that one. Um, and then the Mon, so similar two versions of the car race so the Le Mans there and the Kentucky Derby in the same style of cabinet and the Grand Prix and the uh, Epsom Derby were in a slightly different style of cabinet but both seem to be six players so I'm not sure unless they were just a couple of years apart perhaps hmm more stuff to find out. Uh, that's just the black and white version of that picture. Uh, the Monte Carlo Rally. This is quite an early one. Uh, which I think is just a light flasher type thing. Rather than being any actual um, like model cars or anything in it, as I know, it's just a light flasher that one. Uh, more key rides, Rudolph and Pongo. We sold a few. Sure, sold some Pongos and a Rudolph or two over the years. And possibly again just the toys rather than the whole rides, but we've seen them around. And then we've got 
the more modern one. Which one's this one? Race day. So carry on the horse race theme, but a pusher. And the newer ones. Single double player, I don't know if they made it in, the, in double sided or not. <clears throat> and then River Queen. I remember selling, I had one of these. Botany, Botany Bay, I think we had it. Can't remember, I think we might have sold it to Clive. Hmm, not sure where that one went. And, <clears throat> oh yeah, the more kind of modern version of the roulette. So I'm not sure how many versions they've made of roulette, quite a few different ones, it seems, over the years. Must be their most successful machine. A uh, much earlier version. Old Penny, so obviously pre-70. Um, In the hexagonal case. Another version of the horse racer, the Royal Ascot. Actually, I think it might be the Ascot I had, not the Derby Day. Um, Santa Fe Express Kitty Ride. Oh, remember the kiddie rides in a minute. I found um, a brochure I'd got on Edwin Hall kiddie rides, which is quite good. I'll have to get that up, scanned in and uploaded. A scoot around, novel two seater kiddie ride, no less. The scooter's on, very 60s. Base bunny. Hmm. Now that's an odd, odd theme if there ever was one. A two season revolving key ride. Interestingly, you can just about kind of see the mouldings are very much like they're the bit the kids sit in. It has a headlight on the front and it looks like the the kind of the back of the seat. You can't really see. You've got to see when I upload the things to the website. But it looks like the little dodgem cars, little corner up mini dodgems they had. It looks like two of those have been used as the basis for this. Uh, and then kind of, you know, just filled in with fiberglass, basically. With a bunny rabbit in the middle of it. Slightly odd. And I think this is the last of the Whitaker's ones we've got. And I've got some other stuff to show you in a minute. Uh, the Wild West Rick Wheel. Quite a nice looking thing. It's a bit Brenco, isn't it, really? A big kind of spinny wheel type thing. I think that's single sided. It almost looked double sided, but I think it's a single sided against the wall job. Um, from the photograph, though, then again, it looks like it's got end player positions as well. Curiously. It doesn't look deep enough to be two player and this is that's the photographs kind of been cut I don't know not too sure on that one uh, so that's all those then there's a whole load here um, that Gary sent us have some flyers which hopefully I might be able to get some better scans of in due course of um, <clears throat> Jameson machines mostly um, but sold through craft so we've got Auto Fruit, Lucky Throw, Gold Cup, Snap Light, Extra Fruit. I don't remember seeing one of those. And Royal. I think they've probably sold all the other ones over the years. But Snap, I'm not sure about Snap Light. Let me just find the uh, Jameson page in the background here. Um, Jameson, have I got any of those listed? Uh, so we've got Auto Fruit, I've got Lucky Throw, Lucky Bells, I thought I haven't got Lucky Throw either, but enough. I thought I'd sell that one, Gold Cup we've got, haven't we? I'm sure. Um, 
snap light or snap. I wonder if that's the same thing, snap or snap light. Yeah, extra fruit I haven't got. So some new ones on there we've not got on the website. If anybody's got any of these machines, uh, a photo would be good. Um, Auto Fruit 1965, that seems to be spelt differently from Auto Fruit, the previous one. This is Auto Fruit F R U T E in 66. <clears throat> 65 is fruit spelt correctly, interesting. Or again, top 10. Mm, top 10, yeah, we've had one of those. Big top. Yep, we've had that one through. And advertising the four ways there as well. We've got the extra fruit again. That's a new one on me. Snap light, gold cup, and lucky throw. Um, I've got lucky throw, I've got lucky bells. Here again, this kind of multi slot betting things. So bet on one to five. Mm, I think they're all the same machines actually, they're just a different year's flyer, slightly clearer. And then we've got Jockey Club and Superfruit. Jockey Club, and I haven't got that one. I haven't got Superfruit, I don't think either. Nope, there, another two new ones. Twin Bell. No, I haven't got that one. So there's quite a few new ones here on me. Sterling, I think, was a craft machine, I think. We've got what we've got listed down as uh, conversions. With Baromat Max, Baromat, Baromat Max in, I can't speak. The mouth of the T that might help. Yeah, Sterling. So Twin Bell, Jockey Club, and Superfruit. I don't know who made those. There. If they were a Jameson or somebody else, Crafts were distributors for other manufacturers. So I'm not sure who actually made those ones. Uh, Rondo and Laron, we've got those there, Jamesons, and the Lucky Throw and Circus. Don't think we ever sold any of those. Floor standing things. <clears throat> um, then what have we got here? Four sided Rondo. The kind of Perspex. Prize display cabinet on the top. Just put whatever in. Those are quite interesting. Uh, triple crown. This is quite interesting thing. It looks like a looks like a very ballyish type of case almost. But appears to be a flashy light thing rather than a um, rather than spinning reels. The text isn't too clear, but I can just about read it. Um, he says squinting. Transistorized plug-in printed circuits, fitted with national rejector, finger tip power control, anti-cheat handle, no moving parts, therefore no jams. Beautifully presented in chrome and dark oak Mayblight, is that or something? For Mike, in other words. Uh, fully lit up display panels, servicing practically illuminated. So yeah, so whether they took Bally cabinets and it's a kind of a Bally-ish handle, just the form of it, it looks very Bally, doesn't it? I don't know, or whether that's just what they based them on and made them from scratch, I'm not sure, I've never seen one. So sort of a flashy light machine, but banditified. That's quite interesting. 
Uh, so there we are. So that's that lot. I'll just let that lot run through while we have a chit chat. And I'll tell you about the event in a tick as well. Uh, Paul says, I'm just playing. Hang on a minute. Let's click the right button. Yes, there we are. That should just run through in the background then. Um, where am I? Oh, I'm over here. Look, let me just grab me. Copy me. Not particularly want to look at me, I'm sure, but there we go. Hello. Um, I can remember Whitaker's swimming machine where you bet on the colour swimmer. In the same type of cabinet as a Derby racer, the swimmers were in a tank of water. Yeah, that does vaguely familiar, doesn't it? Swimming machine. Hmm, sounds brilliant. Whitaker's swimming machine. Well, we like the sound of that. I just have to uh, make contact with Whitakers and see um, what they can tell me themselves, what they've got in their archives. <clears throat> I've got some more interesting um, archive type contacts I'm working on as well, but we've got a lot of stuff. So uh, hopefully we'll, in due course, we'll be having loads and loads and loads more stuff come through. Um, somebody's got almost a complete set of uh, coin slots from the 60s to the um, to 2000, uh, which is an absolute gold mine of info. That would be interesting. Which could swim machine? We bet on the car that swim in the lane. Hmm. Wonder how they stopped the water getting into the machine. How the how the swimmers were magnets, maybe. Don't know. It kind of vaguely brings a distant memory that. Anybody else remember a Whitaker's swimming machine? Hmm. So yeah, seems um, <clears throat> a few more machines that we hadn't got before. So again, as usual, I will get these um, various images uploaded onto the website <clears throat> over the next day or two. I'll try and um, squeeze a bit more detail of them where I can, just play around with them in Photoshop with the contrast and uh, things and to get as good as we can for now. But if anyone's got any better copies of them or other images, then please send them through. I want to add them on. Uh, so yes, to um, event, I have penciled in, I found a good venue um, in Northampton, just off the M1. So if you're from the east, it's uh, 40 minutes east of the Elephant House, if you used to go in there. So anybody from over this side of the country it's 40 minutes nearer if you're directly west i.e sort of mid wales or something then it'll be 40 minutes further um, but hopefully being just off the m1 a slap bang in the middle of the country it's about as central as a spot as i could find i think the swimmers arms used to rotate as they moved along yeah 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 that's vaguely coming back to me i've, I've seen one of those but i was probably two or something at the time but um it does sound vaguely familiar that uh, yes, so um, I'm looking at Sunday, the 6th of March, which is four or five weeks' time. Uh, Northampton, just off the M1, it's literally about a minute off. Um, there's a pub, it's got a nice function room with sort of direct access off the car park, and it's only a little outdoor area, kind of fenced off, which I suppose is like a smoking area officially, but um, it's quite handy. There's also a hotel on the same site. And of course, being a pub, we can have a drink and a Sunday lunch as well. So the idea would be, like we did in Yarmouth back in November, up at Peter's, to um, for people to come along, bring a machine, some fairground art, some vintage toys, some anything you think anybody else would be interested in seeing, basically, um, and have a get together and a good old chin wag for the afternoon, have a drink or two 
have a lunch, have a chat. Um, and yeah, just have a good old social, really, which is what everybody says they miss the most, or have done in the past couple of years. So uh, I sent an email out. I'll put it, for those who are not on the email mailing list, I'll send a message out through the website as well, just to see how that date fits with people, who would come and who bring something. Um, it'll be free again for members and your family if you want to bring them with you. But of course it does rely on people turning up and bringing stuff. So I'll bring two or three machines, um, a couple of bits of fair own art, a chunk of carving or something, some painted work, whatever. Um, hopefully other people bring stuff as well. Um, and ideally stuff we don't see all the time. So if you've got a choice, you know, don't bring your Brian's 11s, just bring your Brian's U in or something we don't see very often. Um, I'm sure you get the idea. Um, perhaps what I could do is put a page on the website in due course um, with with who's coming, data protection, blah, 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 or whatever. Um, but at least what's being brought. So we don't have five people turn up with the same thing. So if you see someone is already bringing a um, Brian Ewing, because that's just what I've mentioned, then don't bring yours, bring your uh, Wonders Club, something or other, if that makes sense. So yeah, let me know who's up for that on that day. Um, and then if it looks like being a goer, I will get the venue booked. Obviously it's, it's uh, only a few weeks away, so I need to pull the fingers out on that one. But we'll just see how that goes. If nobody wants to come, I won't bother doing it. It's as simple as that. But obviously the problem with um, the first one up in Yarmouth was being right on the East Coast. It really only suited people, you know, in the East. So hopefully this being right slap bang in the middle of the country. Um, it's not too far for most people to get to. Uh, and if you were feeling really keen and wanted to stay the weekend, as I say, there's a hotel there. Uh, uh, travel lodge or premier in one or the other uh, which one I looked earlier on was only 30 quid I think for the night um, so yeah let me know on that one who's prepared to put a bit of effort in because if you don't it won't work well if you don't I won't bother doing it basically so there we are, um, that's that. Any questions on anything, let me know below or send a message. Um, Thursday, hopefully, there's some more stuff coming in, possibly a couple of big machines. Um, I will be, if anybody wants to meet in Leamington, I can call in Leamington on my way past on Thursday, basically. So if you've got anything to collect, or drop off to sell and you want to meet in Limited on Thursday, <coughs> I could potentially meet you there um, early-ish morning, sort of nine-ish, ten-ish, something like that probably. So let me know on that, otherwise the rest of the week other than Thursday I'll be here in Cambridge and then again at the weekend. Um, What's the other thing I was going to say? Oh yes, these lovely carnival heads I've got in some fantastic um, paper mache carnival heads, animals and um, um, like comedy, a couple of comedy characters. So I'll stick some Instagram pics of those up in the next day or two. Um, they're packed up at the minute, so as soon as I've got them unpacked and photographed. Uh, and they'll probably go on the website <clears throat> end of the week or early next week. Um, with some more fairground stuff. Uh, the lo that lovely fairground pay box that's here in Cambridge as well now ready to be photographed and put up. A um, couple of you have seen it who've been to see other stuff. Um, that would make a great centrepiece in an arcade or a, or a collection with half a dozen bandits or war machines in it or something. Um, hopefully we can sell it one go. I don't want to have to split it up. It'd be a real shame. But 
we'll see if we can get a decent offer for it one in one bit uh, we will do so that'll be going up soon um, and then I'll be starting on uh, my mad junk clear out as well which will be a bit like the old um, January pound sale basically um, which I might make a start on tomorrow I'll see how it goes I've got a few other things to do so yeah there we are any questions comments of anybody um, speak now or whoever holds your what's it um, and we'll go from there I'll just let these machines run to the end again and then we'll have another quick run through the prices for anybody who joined late I can't remember what the last image was here it was those craft things wasn't it um, there we are uh, yes those craft sort of bally bandity type thing wherever it was I don't know who made interestingly but some of you know um, and then so next uh, thing we're looking for pictures on is going to be uh, Alka, Alka Electronics and uh, Mayfields so they made some really interesting stuff between the two of them uh, I've got a few Alka things I haven't got much Mayfield so if you've got anything on those lines <clears throat> send them over and we'll try and build those pages up And yeah, just keep carrying on, really. Keep going through different manufacturers. Uh, and trying to fill in the gaps um, in the database. With at least, you know, say any image is better than no image. Then obviously a good image is better than a bad image. So let's start off with any image and then hopefully in due course people will come along and say oh I've got a better image of that uh, machine or preferably the machine itself and then um, we just keep updating it as we go along so just get to the end of these and I'll do the prices another another once round and then we'll call it a night if anyone's got anything to say. I don't think I've got anything else I need to tell you. Um, what else did I put up for sale today? Oh yeah, that stand, bandit stand. That's all right, if you need a bandit stand. And, um, Oops. Juggling the screens here, making sure I don't turn anything off. Uh, oh yeah, and the winning plan machine, that was the other thing, wasn't it? Yeah, the Whitaker's swimming machine. I'm intrigued now. You're going to have to find a picture of it, Paul. We still haven't discovered what the dice machine was with the Perspex tubes on with the dice in the top that uh, Greg remembers as well. So I wasn't going completely mad remembering that machine. So it's definitely not the die field one with the big, the Mayfield one with a big dice cage in that spins around. It's a completely different thing. In Barron's, we think it probably was. Greg remembers it in Barron's, and that's probably where I saw it as well in Yarmouth. So if anyone can think what that was, we'd all like to know. Um, so yeah, and has anyone got an extra fruit? I don't recall seeing one of those. Hmm, all these ones. Paul says the only picture of the swimming machine is in his head. Okay. You have to draw it. We'll, we'll go for drawings, we'll go for sketches, anything. Yeah, I'll have to make contact with uh, Whitakers. 
Pete says he can remember the swing machine too. We'll have to do some digging. Yeah. So it vaguely, vaguely rings a bell. Hmm. Don't know. I would have been very, very young. Not that I'm implying you're all very, very old, of course, but you know what I mean. So there we are. Hopefully some more interesting bits there. Again, there's a few machines that I've not seen before. <clears throat> or don't remember. So I'll get these, uh, as I say, uploaded over the next few days. All the Nixon stuff is uploaded on the various pages that we looked at on Sunday night. Um, select a colour machine. So I've got the full patent on that. Which is 21 pages long or something. So I'll upload that in due course. So if you fancy taking on a project... Uh, you can try and reboot it from the patent drawings. And uh, we shall carry on carrying on. There we are. I think that's probably it. So I think the machine of the week has to be the swimming, Whitaker's swimming machine that several of us can vaguely remember and hopefully somebody will manage to track down a picture of. That sounds quite fun. I suspect it probably didn't last very long because the water would inevitably have found its way into the electrics. And they probably just went bang. But uh, yeah, who knows? Hmm. So there we are. So I think that's probably it. Um, you know where I am. Send me a message. Send any images, etc., through so we can have a look at them. Um, so I just put in here. We're looking for or um, images of stuff made by. Oops, I can't spell Alka Alec. Electronics and Mayfield. There you go. Anybody who tunes in later on. And uh, let's see if we can fill those pages up a little bit. Good stuff. Right. I think I'll probably, that's about it then. Come up to nine o'clock, so I shall sign off. Uh, have a jolly week. If you want to come and look at anything, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday is good. Thursday, uh, I'm going to be out, hopefully, fetching a couple of machines in. And so, I can Thursday morning, I could potentially call in at Leamington Spa if you needed to meet me there for anything on my way out. Uh, Friday I'll be back here in Cambridge and the weekend as well. So just get in touch if you're coming over. Uh, this uh, weekend there's loads and loads of spares and coins finishing again. So have a good look through your project, see if you need any bits. And other than that, we'll catch up again on Friday night with hopefully some more pictures and stuff to look at. Let's just stick in here. Next video, Friday night. See you all then. Right, that's it. Night to night. Catch you soon.